Lonnie, the way you wore your hat, the way you sipped your tea, the memory of all that. No, no, they can't take them away from me. The way you stole a scene Your love for her And all your films I've seen Today, to honor and celebrate the life of a truly eclectic man, a loving husband, devoted father, hell of an actor, writer, producer, director, and I might add, one of the most optimistic men I've ever known. Let's <laughs> <That's, laughs> face it, to manage legit theater for well over 40 years, you have to have a pretty positive attitude. Ronnie was not only a brilliant director, but he was also very smart because we were ten actors. So he chose a play in ten roles. <laughs> he adapted Schnitzler's Laurent, which came to be known as Round Dance. And um, we were a hit. Put us in the limelight. Of course, the greatest thing that ever happened to Lonnie was Ermity. He had no drama. <laughs> Everybody loves Ermity. I remember hearing it over and over again. And one time we had Gene Casey, who was a marvelous composer and a writer, and he came he came to a Monday night reading and he was wearing it. He's a big fellow, he had a t-shirt on that said, but Ermity loves me. <laughs> Lonnie introduced me to Brie Cheese because it was the only cheese his dog would eat. What am I learning about French food? Anyway, uh, he introduced me to honky tonk music and honky tonk dancing and the proper way of ordering French fries at Sittens, which was burnt. <laughs> he introduced my fast food palate, my excuse me, my fast food nation of a palate to the hamburgers of Hamptons and the tacos at Ernie's Taco House. He taught me that coffee wasn't ready for consumption until I had stuck my finger into it to give it the right sweetness. <laughs> his greatest asset maybe might have been his ability just to maintain this place so that would-be artists could sustain themselves, could cultivate their desires for expression, maybe you know by taking risks, for example, to which they would otherwise be unlikely to take. One important instrument for this was the project, where an actor perhaps could place himself in a scene or a play as a character that he feels alienated from for one reason or another, gain self-knowledge and something of the art through the experience, and so a critique that followed his presentation by my Lonnie could be the epitome of the best kind of teacher. One that doesn't realize he's teaching. He rather just makes observations in the moment, you know, the moment you're living in. The best of which tend to seem obvious, you know, like when Lonnie said, having an ego is okay, but an actor needs confidence because without it he can't act. Lonnie was not only encouraging with words, and then he acted on what he believed. I don't know any other artistic director who would have gone to the home of a fledgling writer and worked until three in the morning to try to mold this rough piece into a production. Well, I always say that the best teacher is the best student. And Lonnie was definitely the best student. Not only of theater, but of life itself. First time I met Lonnie was in 1962 in a Broadway show. And Joseph Scott was the director. And Lonnie would say that he thought Joseph Scott was a, a great actor, but his direction left a little bit to be desired. <laughs> <laughs> there was something about the comedy 
who, who took some joy, extraordinary joy, trying to draw any nugget of possibility out of me. He was so kind, so extraordinary, that because of that, I was able literally to pursue this life. He gave me 